Welcome to Inside Gaming, I'm Brian, it's the Weekend Roundup. Oh boy, we got a crazy one to start off on. So, a PC game called Morehow has been in the news lately with its developer being accused of not doing enough to combat a toxic community. An article on PC Gamer claimed that the player base around the medieval hack and slasher regularly makes racist, sexist, and homophobic slurs in both the in-game chat and the official forums, seemingly without repercussions. The article also claimed that the development team at Triturnion, an indie studio in Slovenia, weren't willing to crack down on the behavior. Now, while the devs recently did add the option to mute players, they told PC Gamer they didn't want to add a word filter, partly because people might claim we're censoring. The article quoted developer Mike DeRosiers, who said, we want to put the power in the player's hands. If we take an official stance and we put an official filter list on all the words in chat, people will first find a way around it and it might catch innocent words or people might claim we're censoring. And there's also another issue involving race and gender, specifically in the playable characters. Currently, you're only able to make white dudes, but there are plans for playable female characters as well as a range of ethnicities. But according to PC Gamer, the development team said that their current plan is to let players disable these new options if they want. So if you wanted to see only white dudes, you could just flip a switch. On that topic, DeRosier said, whatever stance we take officially, some group of people are going to be upset with us and so ideally we put the power in the players hands and give them the option to enable and disable different things. Developer Andrew Geach added that the option is not set in stone and depends on how our community is in the future. As you might imagine, that article attracted a lot of drama online. After it came out, Triturnion tweeted a statement saying that as a small indie team, they have a lot to learn when it comes to dealing with toxicity and racism in a large community. They also added, we do not nor have we ever had plans to add a toggle to hide other ethnicities or disable characters that aren't white in Mordhau. Any claims to the contrary are false. Now, PC Gamer responded to that by printing a whole transcript of their interview with DeRochers and Geach, which seemed to back up their story. But this doesn't seem like the first time the developers have promised a toggle feature. They also wrote in a Steam forum post in April that they might add a simple client-side toggle, which would let you disable female characters in the game. That was after concerns were made by some of the players about realism of female fighters in a medieval hack and slash. So yeah, it has been quite the week for the folks at Triturion. Polygon reached out to them for further comment and they declined to make another statement saying, there's a lot of wrong stuff going on with this and we are going to try and learn from our mistakes and work a lot better in our internal communication before doing another Bort public statement. Moving on. So we all saw Microsoft talk a bit about its next-gen console at E3. That's the one that's codenamed Scarlet. And you might remember that previously, it was reported that they were actually working on two next-gen consoles that also included a lower-priced one that would be streaming only, and it would connect to the xCloud service, which Microsoft is also still building. Well, according to Theorot's Brad Sams, the cloud-exclusive Xbox apparently still in development, not dead. He said it will just be capable enough to allow a player to quote move around in a virtual environment but there won't be things like npcs interactables text and even graphics yeah that does sound pretty bare bones guys i might pay an extra hundred dollars for text and graphics and npcs <laughs> That's just me. In the video, Sam said he doesn't know if it's gonna launch alongside Scarlet to kick off the next gen, but he doesn't think it's dead and that it's being actively developed. Is CD Projekt Red working on multiple cyberpunk-related games? That was the buzz this week after some people reported that the developer was working on three projects set in the Cyberpunk 2077 universe. That was from a Polish site that quoted CD Projekt President Adam Kaczynski is saying, we're working on three cyberpunk things over the main game and over two more turns out though that was a bad translation so don't use google translate to to base news articles on cd project red later clarified telling pc gamer we currently have a total of five teams working on a number of projects with three focusing on the development of cyberpunk 2077 meanwhile a separate team at the warsaw studio is handling the developer of gwent that's the card game and the final team is currently working on an unannounced mobile project so there you go, 
Just one cyberpunk game, and honestly, that is enough for right now. Just work on that, you guys. It looks great. Man, one of those rumors is that they were working on like a, a multiplayer. Oh uh, yeah, thing too. That would have been great. That would have been cool. Ah. Uh, that, that, I wouldn't be surprised. We've got another leak of the supposed Switch Mini. You might remember that the first one was from accessory manufacturer Hansen, showing a smaller Switch with attached Joy-Cons as well as a case. Now there's another leak, very similar from Roland Quant of Wind Future. It shows a case from another accessory maker as well as an image of the Mini Switch, again with attached Joy-Cons, a little bit more rounded look, the button layout identical to the current Switch. Still no word from Nintendo, but seems to be more and more smoke around these rumors. Now recently, Nintendo did address the leak, saying they were aware of the reports, but in a statement they said, answering to rumors and speculations would end up stealing surprises from our customers and also be unprofitable to all of our shareholders, so we have no answer to that. As a general theory, we are always performing development of new hardware. So, they so you're know. saying there's, there's a, a chance. chance. There is a chance. Another Summer Games Done Quick is in the book, and this one set another record. This one raised over $3 million for Doctors Without Borders at Smash's last year's total of 2.1 million. Awesome event, as always. Of course, we got to see a bunch of cool runs, including Ocarina of Time, Celeste, Punch-Out, Contra, Metroid. I remember all those games. Next up will be the Games Done Quick Express event. That's at TwitchCon September 27th through the 29th in San Diego. Looks like a new Evil Dead game is in the works. That's if you believe Bruce Campbell, and I do. Campbell, of course, played Ash in the movies and in the more recent show, Ash vs. Evil Dead. He tweeted recently to all groovy gamers that the game is being developed for consoles and PC, not VR though. Now, there were three Evil Dead games made back in the 2000s and published by THQ, but the original THQ, they are out of business. It's not clear if THQ Nordic might have the rights or somebody else. Last year, Campbell told Bloody Disgusting that the new Evil Dead game would be a whole immersive kind of dealio. And he said that he'll be voicing Ash, of course, in the game because he wouldn't want someone else's voice hamming it up. Yeah, because hamming it up as Ash is Bruce Campbell's job, exclusively. Yeah, uh, listen. It's, that's him. He's, I, he is Ash. I, listen, this sounds great. I'm excited. But when are we going to get the Burn Notice game that I oh, want? We need a Burn nice Notice reference. game. Yep. <laughs> All right, time for a five-second review. Here we go. Man, I'm going to spend another 300 Aren't, hours on this. Isn't this just 2D Can't, Minecraft? You shut your mouth. All right, moving on, let's talk about games coming out next week. Interestingly, every game is coming out on Switch this week. So starting off coming to consoles, wait, we just said Switch. So I guess the other consoles too. It's the episodic noir adventure game, Bear With Me. Follow Amber as she searches for her brother Flint along with her trusted teddy bear, Ted E. Bear. Apparently Ted E. Bear is a retired grumpy old detective. I like him already. So that's helpful, I guess. Anyway, Bear With Me is releasing on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch July 9th. Okay, so everything's not only on, it's just, right. but everything is on everything the Switch. Everything that's coming out this week is coming out on Switch. In it's addition to maybe some week. other stuff yeah. too. Up next, it's time for some sexy pinball action in Sinran Kagura Peach Ball. You're playing pinball with a crazy theme park aesthetic and it stars a ninja girl who thinks she's an animal, don't they all? There are special challenges to unlock that showcases the girl's charms and it includes all the usual features of the franchise, including dress up diorama and intimacy mode for men of culture like myself and Lawrence. It's coming out on July 9th to the Switch. Combining tower defense and action platformers, it's Soul Seraph. You are the guardian of humanity and civilization is in your hands, as it would be if you were the guardian of humanity. You'll build cities, provide defenses against the ever-threatening monsters, explore strange lands, and descend into monstrous layers to battle it out using your sword and magic spells. It's coming to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and you guessed it, the Switch on July 10th. It's time to embrace the Samurai Afterlife in Skulls of the Shogun, Bonafide Edition. I played this game. In this turn-based combat game inspired by Advance Wars, you'll, oh no, I'm thinking of a different game. I didn't play this. You'll team up ghost samurai warriors, magical animal monks, and mustachioed samurai generals. The Bonafide Edition includes a new episode, a Tanuki monk, and a bunch of new features. It's porting over 
to the Switch. You knew I was gonna say it, July 11th. In Blazing Chrome, the world has been overrun by robots and you need to rise up to save the human race the only way we know how with badass 2D run and gun arcade action. There are five apocalyptic environments, sweet pixel art, boss battles, and more. Kinda sounds like Enter the Gungeon a little bit. It's coming out July 11th for PC, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch. Dead in Vinland is about a family of Vikings that have found themselves stranded on a mysterious island, combining survival management, RPG, and adventure elements. You'll need to explore the island and interact with its residents, all while managing the family's physical and mental health, fighting off diseases, healing wounds, and enduring the elements. Dead in Vinland is porting over to the Switch July 11th. More turn-based combat, more games inspired by Advance Wars, it's Tiny Metal Full Metal Rumble. The devs say it's an authentic war simulation for all generations. It has a cartoony style but promises a combat system that is easy to learn but difficult to master. <coughs> how'd, that, how'd, that, how'd that special voice work out? I, it didn't work out as well. All right, all. let's go. With a campaign and 77 maps of various sizes and difficulties to choose from, it hopes to provide something for everyone from the casual to the hardcore. You can pick this one up on PC and Switch July 11th. In Professor Lupo and his horrible pets, you're an intern to a space scientist named Professor Lupo. Kinda sounds like Rick and Morty. Lupo has been traveling the galaxy gathering up dangerous aliens to sell and you, his trusted intern, have been acting as bait for these horrible creatures. Being an intern sucks. However, once Professor Lupo's space station is attacked and all the aliens are set free, you'll need to find a way to escape before you become a delicious snack for the vicious creatures. It's coming to PC and what? Switch on July 11th. And finally, this next one sadly is dumb and no one cares about it, but I guess we'll talk about it. There's a lame game called Dragon Quest Builders 2. I love this game. <laughs> Why would you write that, Aaron? It's releasing <laughs> next week. I like it, it's a block build. The, the first one was one of my favorite games of 2016. It, support this. I, Dragon Quest needs to do better in the West, and this is fun. It's like Minecraft, but like with a point, and it's, it's all Dragon Quest-y, it's great. It's out on PS4 and Switch, July 12th. That's got the BG stamp of approval. All right, that's all the news we've got for you today. Have a great week. We will be, by the time you watch this, we'll be at RTX yeah. uh, doing, we've got a booth down on the floor so you can see me, Aaron, the rest of the B team. Uh, we'll be hanging out. Mort's uh, gonna come uh, by a few times. Is he? Yeah. Is he gonna come in like a, a sedan chair <laughs> carried by like six six yeah, guardians? Yeah, it's gonna be carried by Zach, yeah, Connor, exactly. <laughs> Patrick. Uh, so yeah, we'll see you at RTX. It's always a lot of fun. So can't wait to meet all of you guys personally and uh, have a great week, everybody. Bye. Bit. Censorship has been a big topic of discussion in video games these days. Yeah, on one side we have Valve, who said last year that they were going to relax their policies on what's allowed on Steam. As they famously put it, they'll publish anything that isn't illegal or trolling. Meanwhile, Sony is going the other way, reportedly toning down adult content on the PS4. No! Oh, Lawrence, how do you feel about that?